Have you ever written some C sharp code using for each and await only to find out that it's not working the way you expect? Maybe you were trying to fill a list with async results, but when you check your list, it is still empty. You know, this problem happens more often than you think, and it's super frustrating because there's no real error you can see, just an empty list and wasted time. But don't worry, today I'm going to show you why for each doesn't play nicely with async tasks and what you should be using instead to fix this. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio, a simple console application. I'm pretty sure you know that already. We have a list of integers. And if we want to lock them now into the console or the terminal, we can do the following. Just write one numbers and then for each, that's what we wanted to use. We don't want to add anything. We just want to lock this stuff. So n for the number and then console right line n. Simple as that. And when we run this, we see on my other screen, this is our result. One, two, three, and four. Great. But now what happens if we try to do this asynchronously? So as you can see here, for each expects an action and doesn't return anything. So let's see what's happening next. We start with async n and then here we put this into curly braces because what I want to do is I want to await exactly a task. And to be more precise, I want to use task delay. So what I would expect, right, is to wait for a second, then write one, then wait another second, write two, another second, and so on. But when we run this, we actually see the following. There is no output there whatsoever. So the very first thing we can do to fix this is simply use a for each loop. But first, why is it not working? Well, Put simply, for each doesn't know how to handle async operations or await them properly. And this means the result may be incomplete or it results into non-deterministic behavior. Now, again, the pretty simple fix, the easy fix here is to simply use a for each loop. Let's do that real quick. So instead of numbers for each, we now have something like the following for each number in numbers. And then here, we just put this stuff in there like that. When we fix this little error here, run it again. And now real quick, we see one, two, three, four. It always opens on my other screen, but I think you get the idea. One, two, three, four. All right, so great stuff. This works now, but this is a really simple example, right? So now let's have a look at another one. So here now let's check out this code. We have a method fetch data async and simulate fetch from database. And on here again, we have a list of integers, just four numbers, and then we want to fetch data. So what we would call is asynchronously the fetch data async method with the given IDs. We will create a list and then we will try to use for each again to simulate fetching data from a database. And this is doing the following. Again, we have a delay of a second and then we see the result. Then we lock the result, add everything to the final result and then lock how many uh, data entries, let's say, we fetched in the end. So when we run this, with again for each, then we have the following result. We see fetch data count is zero. Again, not what we expected. So when we again use a for each loop instead, but there's another way, so please keep watching. And the other way is really interesting in my opinion. So here now again, we say result, await simulate fetch from database. And when we run this now, we should see, yep, data for ID one, for ID two, three, each second we see something else. And then in the end, we see the result of four. But this is now great if you need to call all your operations in order, right? We see one, two, three, four. But now if the order is not important to you and you still want to use asynchronous methods, and run them concurrently, right? Then you can do the following, which is new since .NET 6 actually. And let's just write this together. So we have a wait and then parallel for each 
async. And as you can see here, this thing now executes a for each operation on an i enumerable a list in which iterations may run in parallel, so really concurrently. And this means that the result it may not be in order, but let's just write the code and then you see what I mean. So here now we have the IDs, this is our source, and then again, an asynchronous method. So async and then ID token, and then again in our new scope, we do the following, in essence, the same stuff that we did before. So like that, we can now remove this or comment this out, save it, and let's run this now. And I hope you saw that. We directly see the results. So we are not really rating uh, second after second after second. We have tasks running s concurrently in the end, but you see that the order is not correct, right? Four, three, two, one, and the result in the end are still four data counts so of data count in the end is four. Let's just try that again. We're waiting for a second. Okay, this is, you know, it's another result, four, two, three, one. Okay, one more time, you run this, and now we see four, one, three, two. All right, so now you know if it's important for you to use asynchronous methods in order, you would want to use the for each loop. Otherwise, if the order is not important to you, then you might want to use parallel for each async. All right, so now you understand why for each doesn't work well with await and how to fix it. But mastering async programming is just one piece of the puzzle. If you really want to dive deeper into C Sharp, you need to understand delegates and events, which are key to writing flexible and maintainable code. So check out this video here on the screen where I break down how delegates work and how to use events in C Sharp.